Hello students, welcome to my lecture series on reinforced concrete structures. In today's lecture, I am going to discuss about methods of designing RC structures. The outcomes of today's lecture are, upon completion of today's class, student can able to know what is the aim of a design and what the design methods are available for designing the RC structures, what are the concepts of each method of designing RC structures. And finally, they can able to compare the different methods of RC structures design. Right. Now, we will discuss what is the aim of design. The aim of design is to uh, decide the size of the RC members, that is reinforced concrete members, and what amount of reinforcement is required, such that the structure will perform satisfactorily during the life period with minimum cost. The design structure should be able to sustain the all the loads, able to sustain deformations and it is able to have uh, adequate durability and should be resistant to the misuse and fire resistance. The generally, if you adopt any method of a design of RC structures, there we have some common steps. Those steps are like this. First step will be we have to assess all the loads. The loads, uh, generally there will be a dead load. Apart from the dead load, if any other external loads are applied on the structure or not. By considering these dead loads and other external applied loads, we have to calculate next what the design load is. And we can take a combination of different loads also. So we can take if uh, dead load is generally there, dead load nothing but uh, it is a self weight of a structure. Along with the sulfate of the structure, if any live load is are there or any snowfall, or then we can consider a snow load or any earthquake. If the structure is designed in earthquake region, then we have to consider the earthquake load also. By considering all these combinations of loads, uh, finally we can uh, determine what is the design load is. After uh, determining determine the design load and that if the design load is applied over a particular structure, then what its response? That response we have to calculate. The response means because of application of this design load, what is the bending? How much will the bending will happen? And what is the shear force occur? And well, whether it is uh, uh, give the deflections or something, right? So well designed member should be free from all these things. That is, uh, it is not subjected to bending. It is not subjected to shear off and it should not subject to any deflections. Those all are should be within the limits. Such cross-sectional area of a concrete section and amount of reinforcement should be needed for the uh, construction. Right. So these are the common steps. I will repeat again. First we have to assess the all the loads. Based on the assessment of load, we have to calculate the design loads. Based on the design load, after application of this design load, what is the structural response, like how it behave, behaves, like uh, bending moment, shear force and all. And finally, this response and considering by response and this design load, we have to calculate optimum cross-sectional area of a concrete section as well as optimal amount of reinforcement. Right. Now, we will discuss what are the methods for RCC, RC structures design. There are following methods are available. Those are working stress method ultimate load method, limit state method and uh, based on the experimental investigation. So this now this working stress method is the oldest method. Generally it was uh, at, uh, at least uh, 19, 19, 000, 19th century we are uh, we have used up to 191902 1950 in that age in that years, we have used our working stress method, right? After uh, after uh, so many research, there are some drawbacks of this working stress method. To overcome those uh, drawbacks of uh, working stress method, there one more the method is developed. That is ultimate load method, and this ultimate load method is developed in USA 1956. Then it is implemented uh, in UK in 1957. Later. Uh, this method was implemented in our India. 
Next, the th third method is, it is method intended to, intended to develop to overcome the drawbacks of working stress method and ultimate load method. Here, this method was developed in uh, 1978, sorry, 19, sorry, 1955, but it was implemented in India in 1978, but not, not at full fledged way. It was completely implemented in India in 2000. There we have a one code that is IS456-2000. That is only for limit state design of RC structures. So these are the methods are available. Next we'll discuss the method uh, in detail one by one. The first method is working stress method. It is a oldest and a traditional method. It is not only used for design of reinforced concrete structure, but also we can design the steel structures always as timber structures also. So, what is the concept behind uh, this working stress method? This method is based on elastic theory. That means a structural member behave like a behave like linear elastic man. Means the structure which is constructed by using uh, some materials. So those material are uh, steel and the concrete. Now, if the steel and concrete or we are assuming as a elastic materials then obviously our structure also behave like a elastic manner and here the stress strain curve of a concrete assume it to be linear uh, from zero at the neutral axis and maximum at the extreme fibers means if we draw the stress strain curve for that concrete member that rcc member we have a neutral axis the neutral axis means where stresses all the stresses are zero so, at the particular neutral axis, our strain will be zero and the stress will be zero and the, the, the stressor will be maximum at the extreme fibers and they will follow the linear relationship. And permissible stresses are kept well below the material strength. Means, here if you take a steel is a material, you know what is the characteristic compressive strength of a steel? Suppose that is depends upon the grade of steel. Suppose if I take the grade of steel is Fe415. Here the 415 is represents me the characteristic compressive strength of a concrete. That means it will be a load of 4, 415 Newton per mm square area. That is that a maximum capability. But in this working stress method, we are using the stresses much lower than this. That uh, those stresses are called permissible stresses or allowable stresses, we can say it is a working stress. We are allowing on that particular member of a steel less than the stress, less than that particular stress. Right, right. In this method of design, the members are designed to never go beyond their elastic limit. As I earlier discussed that, the within the elastic limit, whatever the cross section you have designed for that by using this particular working stress method, if you apply the load over that particular uh, member, in no case, this should not ex that the member should not exceed its elastic limit. Right. The allowable, permissible or working stresses can be determined based on the materials yield or ultimate stresses. For calculating this uh, permissible stress or working stress or allowable stresses, we have a formula that that is permissible stress equal to yield or ultimate stress by FOS. Here FOS refers to factor of safety. So what do you mean by this factor of safety? Why should you use this factor of safety? So here, here I, will give, uh, I will tell you an example. If you are going to examination hall, we are going to examination hall with a two pens. Why? For writing exam, one pen is enough. What is the use of another pen? Here, another pen is for a factor of safety. If any uncertainties are happen during the when we are writing the examination, if anything happened to that particular pen, then how can I write the exam? Then I can use another pen. So that one pen will be the factor of safety for that purpose. Similarly, here we are using factor of safety in this uh, calculating permissible stresses. Right? And the factor of safety values of 
uh, reinforced cement concrete materials as for IS 456-2000 is for concrete it is 3, for steel it is 1.78. Here I have one question. These two materials are used in preparation of RC, reinforced concrete cement. Why these two values are different? For concrete they are given 3, for the steel they are given 1.78. Yes, there is a some reason for that, that is concrete is not a factory product. It is prepared at the site. Here lot of man for his involvement and the material what we have, what we uh, use for the preparation of concrete may be inferior. So because of that we are using more factor of safety to overcome the uncertainties after construction of any structure by using that concrete. But whereas the steel we have a less factor of safety compared to the concrete that is 1.78. Here it is a factory product we can uh, it, it, it will be produced or it will be manufactured under controlled environment and a good, good, good quality control may be possible. So because of that there is no I think uh, there is no uh, deviations in materials or a supervision or quality that's why we are using a factor of safety for steel as 1.78. Though it is made up of a the cautious environment still we may come across in future if you use the steel in the uh, um, RC member uh, to overcome the uncertainties, uncertainties due to the steel there we are using the uh, 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 factor of safety for steel is 1.78. Generally the stresses induced due to the applied load on any material can be calculated by using principle of strength of materials. Yes, we can use. But here, the RCC is a not a single material. It is a, a composite material. You know, what is the meaning of composite material is? A material which is made up of two or uh, more material is called a composite material. Here, RCC is a composite material because it is made up of a steel and uh, concrete. So, but determination of stresses induced in these RCC members are that much easy by uh, calculating that uh, by using principle of strength of materials. But stresses in reinforced concrete cement can be calculated by using of by using the concept of strain compatibility. So what do you mean by the strain compatibility? That means strain compatibility means there exist a perfect bond between steel and concrete. That means they, though they are physically uh, different materials, but when you are embedded in the concrete, when the steel is embedded in the concrete, those two material will behave like a single material, right? Now, see, it is a, a typical beam of made up of a reinforced cement concrete and this is a concrete and this is a steel and the concrete around the steel will develop a perfect bond with this steel. That means if any temperature variations are there then if steel used to elongate simultaneously along with the steel this concrete also elongates. If the during the temperature levels falls then this member subjected to contraction. At that time, the steel will be going to contract. Similarly, your concrete also going to be contract. So I can say, finally, this because of under, under under any load applied on a member, this RCC member, strain in steel is equal to the strain in concrete. That's what's a compatibility. This happens when if there is a perfect bond between cement, uh, uh, concrete and the steel. From this compatibility concept, compatibility of strain, one can say that there is a the, there is a indirect relation between stresses in steel and stresses in surrounding concrete. This indirect relationship between the stresses in steel and the stresses in surrounding concrete will be expressed in terms of modular ratio. 
This model ratio can be calculated by using the formula that is it is represented with a small m, small m equal to stress in steel that is Fs and stress in concrete that is Fc. So we know that Ng's modulus or modulus of elasticity is equal to stress by strain. From that, if you want to calculate stress, the stress is equal to Ng's modulus into strain. Similarly, I will calculate stress in steel that is Es multiplied by small Es multiplied by a capital Es. Here small Es is the uh, strain in steel and uh, capital Es is the a modulus of elasticity of a steel. Similarly, in denominator, we have stress in concrete. The stress in concrete can be calculated by using strain in concrete multiplied by strain uh, uh, elastic mod, uh, Ng's modulus of a concrete. But due to the strain compatibility, we have uh, learned that from our previous slide, uh, the strain in steel and strain in concrete almost equal, same. So I can write Es equal to Ec if these two are get cancelled, the finally the formula available is M equal to Es by Ec. Here Es is Ng's modulus or the modulus of elasticity of a steel and Ec is the modulus of elasticity of a concrete. The ratio between this modulus of elasticity of a steel to the modulus of elasticity of concrete is called a modular ratio. Other words, the modular ratio is a ratio of two moduli of a elasticity. That's why this working stress method also called as a modular ratio method. The sections which are designed by using this working stress method are a stable section, but they will give uneconomical. Nowadays, the use of this working stress method is uh, uh, obsolete. This method is completely obsolete, means it is not in use except some cases. So now, this working stress method in India used for construction of bridges, construction of water tanks and construction of chimneys, except those areas in other, other areas will not using this working stress method. A code also specifies that if uses application of limit state method is not possible, then we can design the members by using working stress method also. Right. There is a formula for calculating modular ratio by using IS 456-2000 that is M is equal to 280 by 3 sigma CBC and this sigma CBC means it is a permissible stress in compression in bending or permissible compressive stress in bending. Here this value is depends upon grid of concrete. So that this value we can get from the code uh, table number 2.1 of IS 456-2000, sorry, table number 21 of, uh, it is 2, I think 2.1, 2.1 of IS 456-2000, if you want to know sigma CBC for M20 grade concrete, that is M20 equal to the permissible stresses in compression, we are taking, it is in bending, so it is value is 7. Like that we can calculate modular ratio value. If the absence of, you know, we can calculate the modular ratio by using other, other formula also that is Ng's modulus of steel to the Ng's modulus of concrete. If the data is not available with us, then we can use this method and by using this method we can calculate what is the uh, modular ratio for a particular grid of concrete. Right. And what are the draw, when we have some drawbacks of this working stress method. So those we will see those drawbacks now. Here the stress strain curve for concrete assumed to be linear which is not yet true. Yes, it is not true because as a concrete is a brittle material, how it is behave like an elastic material? But in this method we are assumed that concrete is an elastic material but which is not true in nature. So, so that means it will not give the true stress strain behavior of a concrete. Next, a factor of safety does not predict the true margin of a safety. It means we are using the factor of safety for concrete is 3, the factor of safety for steel is 1.78 in this working stress method. So whatever the loading condition, we are using same, same factor of safety. If 
any unforeseen load load combination are uh, coming over the structure then what about the safety so so this is one of the drawback those things will not included in this so a factor of safety does not predict the two margin of the safety and the third one is failure mode cannot be observed right so if you take other methods like demonstrated method if the structure will give sufficient warning before its failure such things will not be happen uh, this method if you design a concrete reinforced concrete structure by using this method in this method no where they consider effect of creep and sinkage of a concrete so they have completely eliminated ignored this and the structures which are uh, designed by using this working stress methods are uneconomical so these are the drawbacks of your working stress method so next we have ultimate load method why this method come into existence this method is come into this method is uh, coming into existence for overcome the shortcomings of working stress method that means drawbacks of working stress method here the structural elements are designed for ultimate loads so what is the ultimate load means we are using in working stress method as a, a working load that working loads are increased by multiplying some factor that factor is called a load factor here so here ultimate load can be calculated that ultimate load is equal to working load multiplied by load factor from this load factor can be calculated once you know the ultimate load and working load so it can be calculated by ultimate load by working load so from this a designer can predict that there is a excess load the structure can carry behind the working loads yes we here the load working load is enough but we are using we are enhancing that working load by multiplying some factor means if any unforeseen loads are coming onto the structure those loads also bear by uh, the structure which is designed by using this ultimate load method then i can say hence this method will gives the true margin of the safety which is not given in the working stress method this is a drawback in the working stress method now this drawback will be uh, overcome by uh, design the member by using ultimate load method and they have consider in this method uh, actual stress strain curve of a concrete that is as we know the concrete is a inelastic material so it has a non linear behavior they have consider what is the actual stress strain behavior of a concrete same thing they have consider here the structures or the members which are designed by using this method are very economical sections means they will they take less amount of uh, material and they 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 cost less right and similarly this method also has some drawbacks this method will give very thin sections which results excessive deformation and cracking and this method is fail to satisfy the serviceability and durability requirement here when you design the thin sections if you apply a load it will going to deform or it will be buckled if you uh, slender if you design the slender members it will going to buckle or it will give, if you uh, design a beam it will going to def, uh, deflect or it will going to crack so that means the serviceability and its durability will be lose if you design uh, the any member by using this ultimate load method now we have a, another method called limit state method which method is nowadays in existing Uh, the all the structure which we are designing nowadays are based on the limit state method only so this limit state method was developed to overcome the short fallings or the drawbacks of working stress method as well as a limit state method as you know the drawbacks are the structure the by using working stress method we can design uneconomical sections by using ultimate load method we can uh, we can design a thinner sections Uh, which are uh, unserviceable and not uh, durable sections so overcome those important uh, drawbacks we have we are developed a limit state method here the structures shall be designed to withstand safely 
all the loads liable to act on on it throughout its life means if you design any structural element by using this limit state method it is liable to withstand the loads which are coming on it throughout its life span here in this method what is the limit state means what is the definition of limit state it is the acceptable limit for safety and service serviceable requirements before failure occurs means suppose if you take the structure the life span of the structure is 50 years the st the structure which is designed by using the limit state method will not be subjected to any kind of collapse say uh, deflection any kind of uh, bending any kind of shear any kind of torsion or any kind of cracks within the within this life period that is called a limit state a limit state uh, these limit states the structures which are which are uh, designed by using this limit state method uh, are of uh, they are they are strong in all aspects like bending compression uh, torsion in crack resistance in crack resistance to deflection and resistance to the vibration the aim of this method is the structure will not become unserviceable in its lifetime for the use for which it is intended means it should not be reach its limit state before its lifetime completes means if the structure the life of the structure is 50 years say further you have designed by using this limit state method if the structure going to fail in any one of the criteria as i said in deflection in bending in shear in in torsion well below that say it in 30 years then i can say the structure was reached its limit state within 30 years only right like that so before actual actual limit state is 50 year it is that that uh, call up that that failures will take place within that limit only right so if you design the uh, uh, rc members by using this limit state method they should be fulfill all those criteria the structure designed by using this method able to maintain the structural integrity during and after accidents means if any a fire accidents may happen any local failures may happen or any earthquakes may happen during the tough situations also structure will not lose is structural integrity such that we have to design the members by using this limit state method generally these limit states are two types one is limit state of collapse another is limit state of serviceability this limit state of collapse is corresponding to the maximum load carrying capacity if you violate this maximum load carrying capacity that is called a, then uh, collapse limit state then definitely the structure going to be fail the limit state corresponding to the flexure compression shear and torsion that means the limit state of collapse is take care of flexure compression shear and torsion and similarly we have another limit state that is limit state of serviceability it is corresponding to the development of excessive cracking uh, the limit state of corresponding to these are this will take care of deflection crack and vibration so in this method of design partial safety factors are used for for material strength as well as for the load here if you observe in working stress method there we have used the only factor of safety that factor of safety for stresses only that means for uh, ultimate strength or yield strength but if we coming to uh, as ultimate strength or yield strength of a material there and coming to the ultimate load method there we have given a factor for the load so that is a load factor when you come into this limit state method we have overcome those two problems where uh, one uh, in working stress method not consider, consider about the load and in uh, ultimate load method he has not considered about the 
uh, what is it material strength here the partial shifty factor is adapted for both material strength as well as loads by using this material strength and loads we have to calculate a characteristic strength of the uh, materials and characteristic load and design loads those things we will discuss in detail when you are designing the members using limit state methods so here a small comparison between working stress method ultimate load method and limit state method the, i will compare these three method by using a small problem by taking small example here dear students listen carefully the whole lecture you can understand by a single slide here say here i have a stress strain curve of a hysd bar that the grade of that steel is fe415 this is the graph here i have a three points that is point a point b and point c here point a represents the yield point and point b represents the ultimate point i will explain about point c later on when i discussing about this method right so you know that the stress corresponding to the yield point is called yield stress and the stress corresponding to the ultimate point is called ultimate stress right by using this graph now we will design a a single member a steel member of a length 1 meter and the the design load which is intended to act on that member is 1000 newtons from the same section from the same member i will design it in working stress method ultimate load method and limit state method say i am considering length of that particular member is 1 meter and the design load which is used is that is p is equal to 1000 newtons here i am considering sigma is a stress that is 60 newton for mm square in working stress method why right our working stress method is based on the elastic theory and stresses in this working stress method in no case they should not exceed the elastic limit so this is the maximum limit of uh, this is the maximum limit that is 100 newton for mm uh, newton for mm square well below that we have to take within the elastic limit we have to take the stress say that my member is up to this point my member is within the elastic limit so i will choose that's why i have chosen 60 newton for mm square i know that stress is nothing but load per unit area i have to the design of section means design of area of cross section so from this uh, obtained stress and given load i want to calculate what is the area of cross section is here a is equal to p by sigma a p is given that that is the design load 1000 newtons and sigma is 60 newton for mm square if i calculate this i will get a is equal to 16.66 mm square if i design 1 meter of a member which is subjected to 1000 newton the area of cross section obtained by using working stress method is 16.66 mm square so this values are taken just for example right next i will design the same 1 meter member and which is subjected to same design load of 1000 newton by using ultimate load method so you know ultimate load method is corresponding to the ultimate stress that will be obtained by corresponding to the ultimate point in a stress strain curve of a particular bar here the ultimate point is b the stress corresponding to this particular point b is in this graph that is 200 newton for mm square they can say that is 200 mp so we know that that a is equal to that uh, ultimate that uh, design load by uh, ultimate uh, ultimate stress the design load will be 1000 Uh, sorry, thousand, thousand, and this sigma, the stress is two hundred. By using this, the obtained sigma value and given design load, the area of cross section obtained was that is five mm square. Dear students, observe here. I use the same length of the bar, same design load, but the, I have adapted different method. Then I got a is equal to five mm square. So five mm square. area of cross section is required to withstand this 1000 newtons of load right next coming to the last method 
that is limit state method i will take the same member that is length of the member is 1 meter and same design load will be applied that is 1000 newtons and limit state method also called a a, a plastic theory this is based on a plastic theory right here from the graph i can say this is a, this range what we have between this point to this point this is called a elastic range and between the range between point a to point c is a plastic range and between point c to point b will be the ultimate range so we will design we will design between sorry the elastic range i'm sorry plastic range in between point a and b not uh, that is a and c that is a and b it is l between above elastic range and below the ultimate range that range is called a plastic range so that's why i have chosen a point c between point a and point b that is a yield point and ultimate point so the stress corresponding to point c is 150 newton for mm square by obtained uh, stress from the graph is sigma equal to 150 newton for mm square and a design load is already given to you for a member of 1 meter length from that i can calculate area equal to that p by sigma here p is 1000 and sigma is a 150 the cross section area obtained from this is a equal to 6.6 mm square dear students see the final results for working stress method we got area of cross section 16.6 mm square a highest among the remaining two and by using limit state method we got 5 mm square very low value among all these three and we have uh, area of cross section for limit state method is 6.6 mm square that is a, a medium value among all these three which value is adapted so if i adapt this method of design i have got area of cross section is 16.66 mm square which is far higher that means the structure because of the higher area of cross section the structure may be a stable but for designing this much of area of cross section we required lot of uh, material that lot of manpower lot of money required so that i can say it is uneconomical as already we have discussed that in our previous slides about working stress method it will give the stable structures but structures are uneconomical i think now you have justified here all right coming to the ultimate load method we have got in area of cross section is 5 mm square this method will give very thin sections so compared to this three it has very less area so it will give the thinner sections thinner sections will not be safe and serviceable so as we have a lesser cross section the amount of uh, materials required for this cross section is less so that i can say that it is economical but not safe but it is unstable i can say the 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 uh, components of a structure which are designed by using ultimate load method are unstable in nature but they are economical so same thing we have discussed in our uh, uh, ultimate load method we are discussing our previous slides i think this also justified now now lastly limit state method so of the uh, area of cross section obtained is 6.6 mm square here this is not this area is not larger one not a smaller one right so i can say the st the structure which is uh, designed by using the limit state method are they are stable and they are well within the uh, budget or well within the material requirement or method of material available so i can say uh, these are economical also so finally i can conclude that the structures which are designed by using working stress method are stable but uneconomical whereas uh, by using ultimate load method they are unstable but economical finally the structures which are uh, designed by using limit state method stable as well as as well as economical i hope you understand the comparison between working stress method ultimate load method and limit state method by using this small example right now we'll discuss 
the previous complete exam questions which are asked in the uh, topic we have discussed today the first question is the first question is as per is 456 2000 factor of safety for steel in working stress method is here many student will confuse there are so many factor of safety is we can use in working stress method as well limit state method those values are different and the the factor of safety values in working stress method are different the factor of safety values in limit state method are different right you have to clearly remember those values as steel so steel in working stress method the factor of safety of steel is 1.78 and the 3 is for concrete so as for this question the answer b is correct that is 1.78 the next question asked is the ratio of two moduli of elasticity is options are poisson ratio aspect ratio modular ratio and none as we discuss about aspect in the about modular ratio modular ratio is ratio between elastic modulus of a steel to the elastic modulus of a concrete these two are modulus so that's why the ratio of two moduli moduli of elasticity is called a modular ratio so the answer is c that the next question asked is the modular ratio of m20 grade concrete as per is 4562000 is right here mention we have to calculate the modular ratio of m20 grade concrete as per code only that means you should know what is the codal formula for this right according to the is 4562000 there is a, a formula for modular ratio that is m equal to 280 by 3 sigma cbc here cbc is the compressive stress permissible compressive stress in bending it is permissible compressive stress in bending so this value depends upon the grade of concrete so given grade of concrete is m20 this sigma cbc value can be obtained from this table so the table is the given grade of concrete is m20 and corresponding sigma cbc that is permissible stress in compression in bending is 7 So if you substitute the 280 by 3 is already given in formula into 7, the 7 value is obtained from this code book. That is 13.33. So the answer is Y. So that's all for today's today's that is for uh, that's all for today's class. Thank you.